Hey guys, so this is the training we did last night. So just a quick overview really about just how important walking is and the benefits. And it's a lot of science here, so I, I did it that way. Um, just give you an idea. Um, walking's been around forever and it's pretty much still the most ancient exercise and still the most modern exercise. So it's a really good opportunity for you to make mission, make walking a mission of your life. But this is really about the pace you walk at when you do walk, like say you're walking the dogs, you're walking the park, walking the beach, walking the city, wherever, um, fields, you name it. But you can actually get a hell of a lot fitter and healthy and have massive health benefits by just walking at a certain pace. And it's, it's, it's why I always talk about the four mile an hour pace. And that's also 6.4 kilometers per hour. And this is all science here. So it's really showing how you can live up to 20 years longer with a better quality of life. And it's some really good proven stuff. So getting walking under your belt is really, I think simple. You can walk from your front door. You can put a pair of trainers on, walking shoes, uh, it's raining waterproof coat. It's actually a sunny shines day and it's September the, what is it, 21st today? I think, 20, yeah, 21st. So if you're looking to live a longer, more active life, there's just a certain number of things you need to be aware of. Um, obviously, we touched on this last night. We talked about blood pressure, 120 over 70, um, BMI, 1926, heart rate below 72 beats. Your app will tell you your um, heart rate um, and cholesterol is like 3.2 to 5.2. With cholesterol, you do need to know the breakdowns, LDLs, HDLs, triglycerides. Ask me that if you want. Um, if you're someone who prefers to walk for exercise, there's another data point you should aspire to, and it's a walking pace. So I'm just going to run through this quickly, um, and you can just obviously message me or call me if you need more advice. Uh, University of Sydney published in BSJ. Um, person that walks faster on average, risk of both all cause mortality, all cause of death, cancer, etc and death linked to heart disease, which is the biggest killer still, um, was reduced massively. Uh, there's one here from the Health, Inst Health Research Center in Leicester. Um, also people that walk faster were less likely to die from severe cases of COVID-19 and less chance of even contracting in the first place than people just dawdled. Um, <clears throat> if you start at square one, obviously don't stress it too much, we just start get you moving, get walking, do a few thousand steps and then check your pace. This is kind of the sweet spot where you're looking for like four miles per hour. Here's one about cancer epidemiology markers. Um, so cancer survivors, 200,000, 20 years of 1571, found those who walked faster um, had a twofold increased risk. The ones who walked slow had a twofold, sorry, had a twofold increased risk of death compared to with the faster walkers. Uh, this bit here, make sure you know the secret. A cold walking shoe that walks over and to obsess with. I will, um, I'll do that bit for you later. Um, another, uh, according to another study, this is uh, University of Leicester, a brisk walking pace of at least four hours now is the optimum pace. According to the study, women who walked that pace were able to get a life buoyancy of 15 years compared to women who walked three miles an hour. Look, if you start now at three miles, that's fine, <coughs> excuse me, but we're looking to get to like four miles an hour. And there's a lot more here on the research uh, about body mass index and all the other things about weight not really being a risk factor, but it's not been an indicator, but the walking pace and doing the steps is a good indicator of long life. Um, simplest way to test this, I mean, you've all got Fitbits, Apple Watches, Garmin's to do the program, so it will tell you. But if you work, if you map out a mile, like with your Fitbit or Garmin, uh, or you drive a mile and then you walk it and you do that in 40, uh, 15 minutes, that's a that's a 15 minute mile, that'll give you four miles per hour. If you walk um, a mile in 20 minutes, three mile an hour, then if you crank it up, start jogging, five miles in one hour is a 12 minute mile, and that's kind of jogging. When you hit run pace, it's usually six miles an hour and a 10 minute mile. And then you start thinking about <coughs> if it's your bag, it doesn't have to be, because like I say everyone's individual and, and different. Um, you could then think about couch to 5K. Harvard Medical School, um, they talk about the perceived exertion scale. The only thing I say here though, if you are on any kind of blood pressure medication, heavy duty, or you've had any heart disease or uh, bypass, uh, bypasses or stents fitted, then talk to me or talk to your doctor first because heart rates don't always work that well when you had, uh, you take medication for heart problems 
or you've had any kind of operation on your heart. And I'll show you that at the perceived exertion scale in just a minute. Um, if you're brand new to fitness walking, like if you come to me, then we, we start slow and build up. Obviously, you always start a, a slow level and then just gradually build up. Um, and if you go here, um, we've got moderate to vigorous aerobic activity at intensity. You will experience deep force of breathing, sustainable. That's kind of where we're looking to work. Um, and if you use heart rate training, you can take 220 minus your age. Uh, so I'm 220 minus 54. I've got a maximum heart rate of 166. And if I, I multiply that by these percentages of training, 65 to 70%, I think I'm somewhere between, I think we did last night, 108 to, to 118. Okay, for super fast walking. And here's a guide. And these three should all tie up. This percentage I've got here with moderate in intensity here. Uh, it's a guideline. Remember, these are guidelines. And this is one, if you don't have a heart rate monitor, you've got uh, blood med pressure medication or illness or anything like that. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit smaller so you can see it all. Um, you could work with this. And once again, the 70, 65, 70 is four to six. Breathing heavily, you can hold a short conversation, still comfortable, but no, becoming no more challenging. This is the area you want to be. If you're super, super fit and you really use lots of exercise and doctors giving you the green light, then obviously you can you can be up towards these levels. Uh, just remember, I'm not a doctor, so I would always say if you're going to embark any kind of new fitness or nutrition program, always just get checked out your doctor first. Mm. There you have it, guys. Any questions? Give me a shout.